coming out of the BYU game, I think just to reiterate, um, you know, there was our versatility continues to kind of shine through, um, and I thought it, I thought it did again Saturday. You know, obviously defensively, anytime you can go into a game and you can get you know three three turnovers, uh, you can hold your opponent to two or thirteen on third down. Um, you get three red zone stops, uh, and then you limit explosive plays. It's usually a pretty good day, right? I, I don't need to watch the tape to think, man, that, that defense probably had a really good day. And that's exactly what it looked like when you turn the tape on, you watch our guys play. Uh, naturally, uh, there's, there's areas where I think we can improve, which, which we met on this morning about um, with, with the players to, for them to improve there. Um, you know, from a special teams perspective, you know, obviously a huge punt return by Xavier, but a great job by the other 10 guys, right? I mean, everybody, everybody did a really nice job of creating the running lane um, and, and Xavier trusting his speed, getting vertical uh, to really set the tone for the game from a special teams perspective. Uh, and then from a coverage unit standpoint, you know, we've been so good all year uh, at our ability to cover kickoffs and punts. Um, and there were some that we did really, really well. We're knocking the returner down uh, inside the 15 yard line a couple times, but a little uncharacteristic that a couple got out. And so there's some things there that we definitely need to, uh, need to, need to clean up. And offensively, um, you know, I thought we, we found a way to create some explosive plays. Um, six of 11 on third down was, it was a real positive for us. Um, but we, we can't afford to, two turnovers you know, every week. And so uh, we've got we've to take care of the ball. Uh, and then two of five in the red zone uh, is, isn't good enough. And so uh, especially when you're 0 for 3 on first and goal scenarios. And so to me, um, that's, that's, that's a byproduct of making sure that we're dialed in on the details of the game plan. Um, the execution of it all, the physicality that it, that is needed, um, and so we got to get back to it, um, you know, because we had opportunities in that game for that game to really go a different direction in our favor. Um, we, we didn't capitalize, and so uh, we're going to need to perform better uh, in all three phases, most notably in some of those key areas offensively uh, to continue on the mission that we're on. And so, uh, from an injury update, you know, Ewers, Burke, and Catalan are still all week to week. And uh, as far as Kansas State goes, uh, obviously this is a really hot team right now. Uh, they've been playing as good as anybody in the country uh, in all, all three phases for the last two to three weeks. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's really important that we focus on us and what we need to do. Um, that, that the details and the level of physicality in which we play the game are at the forefront of what we do. Um, I do believe our best football is still ahead of us, and that part is exciting to me. Um, and we're going to need to play complimentary football Saturday against a very good, well-coached football team in Kansas State. So it's an exciting weekend. Um, obviously, we've got you know the big new kickoff here with Fox. Um, you know they're, they're coming to do their show. I think it's a great opportunity for our students, for our fans, uh, to really show up here at DKR and have an impact on the ball game. Um, we've all we've all got work to do. Uh, I think everybody, myself included, could have been better last week, and, and we all need to perform better this Saturday. Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, you know, I think they, they play well together. Um, I think they play as a team. Um, I think they've got a good scheme. They're very aggressive. They, they you know, the, it's hard to stay on double teams. They get you off of double teams at the line of scrimmage. The linebackers are downhill players. They're good tacklers, good tacklers in the secondary. Um, and then they force third and longs. And when, when your majority of your third downs are third and nine plus, uh, then they're able to, to play coverage and rush the passer and get off the field. So um, I, I think it's really critical uh, in this game that uh, you know, we, we've got to win on first down. Um, but but we got to get back to playing our brand of football, and that's a physical brand of football uh, and being detail-oriented and execute. In the middle, Dennis? Coach, um, quickly, would, would Malik, is he the assumed starter right now? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, with him mental-wise and the way he, from what we gathered last week, He's the first guy in, last guy out, that, that kind of guy as far as preparation. What have you seen from him since Saturday to know how hungry he is to improve from week one to week two? I think he stayed consistent, and that's, that's a great thing. You know, I, I don't think for any of our players, they should never feel like they need to change because they're playing more now. Uh, you, know, you develop the habits that you develop um, 
for consistency and he's developed great habits in his preparation not only mentally but physically uh, with the work that he does in the training room uh, his work with coach Milwee, his work on his own um, to put himself in position to, to practice really well um, and so that level of consistency is a thing that that i'm most encouraged about steve i guess if you know from a play caller standpoint with a new quarterback having one game under your belt can you talk about the comfortability and what plays he likes and what you, you know, how that feels going? He likes plays, and I like to call the ones he likes. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I mean, naturally, right? I mean, you, you try to, you do, you do get a feel for, you know, every quarterback manages the game even a little bit differently than the next one. We, we may call the same formations, motions, shifts, whatever that looks like, but how they manage it, the tempo in which they go, what their comfort level is, I think is important to know. Um, you know, where do his eyes go on specific plays that, um, you know, is, is he seeing what he, what he wants to see and is the ball coming up the way he wants it to come up? And so naturally as you get into game planning for the next opponent, you're like, okay, this looked like he was really comfortable with this stuff. This these things over here maybe not quite as comfortable but i've seen him do it before in practice and these things over here uh, maybe we're just not there yet and that's okay too right and so we have plenty of offense to uh to, to play good football with but to your point I, I do think there's finding his rhythm is is really important um and trying to do the things that that he's you know comfortable with but more so comfortable with that he does well um i love to throw deep out routes but I'm not very good at it, right? So naturally, I didn't want those called when I played. I wish I could have. Um, but with Malik, you know, there, he's got all the arm talent in the world, all right? There's a comfort level of the progressions and different things that we do um, that, that hopefully, we're, like I said, we're putting him in position to, to have a great deal of success. In the middle, Eric? Steve, just want to ask you, at various points this year, you've said that the team still has room to play their best football. You know, offensively speaking, you're top 25 in total points, total offense, run, uh, rushing, passing. How do you juxtapose the ability to still have room to grow with the fact that offensively speaking, you're still top third in the nation in various offensive categories? Yeah, well, I think, I think first of all, like defensively, um, I think we're third in the country on third down right now. Um, I think we're top 10 if not top five in red zone defense um and so all right where, where can we improve how do we eliminate some of the explosive pass plays that we've been giving up down the field i think offensively um you know we've we've kind of rectified where we were at early in the year where we weren't great on third down i think we've improved there um, i think we are playing efficient offensive football between the 20s um, but we got to finish these drives you know and um I said to you guys Saturday, I, I would be lying if I didn't say I wasn't frustrated because that changes the whole complexion of a game. When the score starts to go a certain way, now you're starting to make a team one-dimensional. Now you can rush the passer different defensively. So when I've referenced complementary football, it's all those phases adding up together. How can the offense help the defense? play their style in which they want to do. How can the defense help the offense, creating turnovers, giving them a short field? How can the offense then in turn help the defense again, turn those turnovers into points uh, and not turning the ball over and giving them a short field? So it all ties together. Um, but again, you know, as, as coaches, you know, I, I don't want to say you're, you're never satisfied. But man, you know, we, we try to chase perfection every day. And, and when it's not perfect, my job as a coach is to try to help them you know, show them a path and an avenue of where and how close they are to perfection and how we're going to try to get there. Over here on the far left. Coach, when you're evaluating a quarterback's, like, first start, does it look the same as a guy who's a returning starter, or is there, like, a level of grace kind of given there? I mean, what, what do you kind of consider, take into consideration, or what things do you anticipate happening with a – new guy starting. Yeah, I, mean, I, I definitely think that I have a level of understanding of the newness and the different things that can come up. And you can only create so much in practice. You can only create so much in a scrimmage. Um, and sometimes you have, to, you have to live it real life. Um, for example, you know, the, the fumble there in the red area, um, you know, maybe in a practice setting, 
Malik gets that ball off because the quarterback's not live and the defender has to pull off and now you, you can get that throw done. In person, now you realize he's going to hit me if I raise my arm up and the ball's going to come out. And so I think that's a really cool lesson learned for him. We're fortunate that a couple of those lessons learned, we were able to, to bounce back from. He was able to bounce back from. So he learned a lot there too about himself that maybe you don't have to deal with in a practice setting. Uh, and we were able to overcome those things and, and win a ball game, you know, kind of pretty convincingly. Uh, but the next time it comes up, the goal is that he doesn't, do some of those same things. And so uh, there's an understanding of, of it's his first time out there, but there's also a standard and an expectation of how we play at the position. And that's what we hold everybody to. Are you right, Joe? Uh, first playoff rankings come out Tuesday. Do you pay attention, maybe not to the rankings, but what the committee says they're looking for? Or do you just not pay attention to it at all? <sighs> it just all? seems pretty early to me. Um, you know, I, I'm shied away from this. I think we got a pretty good football team. Um, and uh, I think that we're a very versatile team. Uh, and I think the fact that, you know, we, we started our backup quarterback against a five and two team and won 35 to six. And so we get another opportunity this weekend to, to play with our backup quarterback. And so, you know, not every team out there has had to endure some of the things that we've had to. Um, and if they had to play with their backup, how would they play? But I think it, it speaks to the type of team that we have. I'd argue we have the best win in the country right now. Um, the fact that we go into Tuscaloosa, Alabama and beat a team that was 52-1 and one, uh, in the previous 53 games of us going in there. Um, and I hear so much about how, how tough the SEC is, but I haven't seen any of those teams go into Alabama and win either. So I feel pretty good about our team. Um, and I think over time, this whole thing will play itself out. So we got to focus on what we need to do Saturday and, and play our best football. Hey, Steve, you've been outspoken about your frustrations with the red zone offense. Um, how, how hard are you pushing this offensive line? And overall, what have you seen from them? And what's their upside? Well, I'm, I'm, push, I'm pushing our guys hard. Um, like I said, you know, I think that that's my job as a coach. Uh, is to push our players to be the best that they can be individually and then to push the units on our team to, to be the best that they can be collectively. And um, I think there's a standard of offense that our guys have established here of the quality of play that, that we play with. There's a level of physicality that we play with. There's a level of speed that we play with. Um, and there's a level of intricacy to, to which we play with, with the shifts and the motions and those things. And so when, when, when we don't meet those expectations and we, when we don't play to that standard, okay, my job is A, to make sure that we're aware of that, and then B, how are we going to fix that? And sometimes you have to get their attention to do that. Um, and so that was this morning, very candidly. We, I think I got their attention. And we need a really good week of practice. We need a hard-nosed week of practice. We need great preparation. Um, so that we can go out and play really good football against a, against a really good team on Saturday. On your right, Roger. Sark, we head in November with more than a third of the teams tied for first. That's kind of crazy in a 14-team league. What does it say about the league, and what does it say about yeah. the, the home stretch in this league? Well, I think it's like everything, um, which to go back to the earlier question, you know, the start of the year, you know, a, a couple of teams in our league lost some games that maybe they didn't, people didn't think they were going to lose and whatnot. And some other teams won some games in other conferences. Well, all of a sudden now as the league is starting to bear itself out, we're starting to find out that I think our league is probably a little stronger than people gave it credit for uh, in early September. Um, and there's, there's a lot of teams playing really good football. And maybe some of these other leagues aren't quite as strong as people were giving them credit for at the start of the year. And so uh, I think that that's why it's important to watch the uh, entire body of work throughout a season. But uh, our league is tough. I've said it all along. We've got really good coaches in this league. Um, they, 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 they get their teams to play hard and tough. Uh, they're very good schematically. They're great game planners. And you've got to be on your toes you know, week in and week out as a coach in this league. Uh, but you also got to make sure that your team is ready to play because um, as, as we're finding out, there's a lot of teams that have an opportunity to compete for a conference championship in November. Um, and that, that doesn't surprise me. They're, they're really good teams in our league. Uh, Xavier got the punt return for the touchdown. Back when you're 
first trying to settle on a guy who's going to be a return guy for you. What's the key quality that you're looking for, and what separates the good ones from the great ones? Well, I think one, you have to be able to catch the ball. <laughs> I, know that, I know that sounds really simple. Um, but a lot of times in high school, they just don't get – the, the punt, like the punters in college and the pros punt the ball, they're end over end, they're rolling on the ground, and you see so many of these guys in high school always had eight punt returns for touchdowns. Well, seven of those, the ball was on the ground. He picked it up off the ground. He didn't have to field it in the air. So that's you have to be able to do that. Two, you have to be able to field it when people are running at you, right? And, and then three, you have to have courage. To, to make that play, and then four, you have to have the natural instincts and feel to, to run the return. Like in Xavier's example Saturday, the gunner was free, and we didn't block the left gunner very well at all, but he stood his ground and literally catches it and at the same time makes him miss, right? And so the, all those things, I mean, that, that's a, those are qualities that he has, but also it took a lot of time to, to work on those things um, in post-practice and in practice to, to get comfortable doing that. And so um, I think that the, the greatest ones of them all, the Devin Hesters of the world, I mean, those guys are they're just innate, have that ability to field it and make people miss and then get vertical, right? And, and, you, and you, ha you have to have a lot of courage to do all that. Up front in the middle, Bob. You mentioned Malik's arm talent. I'm curious how much you've had to work with him on – the touch part of it, because when you have that arm, it's yeah. it's easy to want to throw the fastball a lot of times. Yeah. But we saw a lot of touch throws on Saturday. No, I, I think that's one thing about Malik. He's a really natural passer of the football. Um, you know, even even the deep ball to AD for the touchdown. I mean, he he has a natural feel of putting air under a ball or or layering a ball. Um, so that that part's pretty natural to him. But yet, where you saw the arm talent. You know, the slant he throws to AD on the touchdown, that, that was a fastball, you know, and that, that thing was coming. And so he definitely has the ability to change, you know, trajectories on the ball, to change velocity on the ball and, and still remain accurate. And so a lot of that, to me, you know, I think he learned really young and, and the passing of the football is very natural to him. Stay here on the left, Kirk. Yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, teams usually reflect their coaches background, personality, approach, and Chris Kleiman seems to have done that at Kate State. Y'all have done that as well, even though you're an offensive guy. Do you feel like this is just a, more of a toughness game than a lot of them? Yeah, I mean, I think Coach Kleiman, A, does a heck of a job. I mean, he's, uh, you know, throughout his career, wherever he's gone, he's had really good football teams. Um, you know, they, they, they play well in all three phases, and you can definitely see his, you know, his imprint on that team now. I mean, he's been there long enough now. That that's that's his group, and you know, I, I think this game is about toughness. I, I think that this game, you know, it's you just look back to the last two years, the way they, those games have gone. Um, you know, two years ago, we were playing with kind of a half of a quarterback and played wildcat and you know didn't throw a whole lot of passes and ran the ball and they were running the ball with Deuce and. Last year, you know, Bijan and Roshan, it was a real tough, hard-nosed physical game there as well. Um, and I, I don't see this game being a whole lot different. You know, it's two teams believe in running the ball. Two teams pride themselves on, on being physical and being tough, um, being disciplined. Um, you know, now that they've really incorporated the quarterback run stuff to what they do. And it, it's not just the young kid, but, but Howard's doing it as well. So they've got a multitude of scheme and run game to go along with the toughness, right? And so it's one thing just to be tough. It's another when you have the scheme with it. Uh, I think we're, we're pretty good in, in those aspects as well. We don't run the cue as much, but schematically and then the physicality of which we try to play the game I think is important. And in turn, when your offense is built like that, generally your defense is, is wired that way as well. So I think both, te both teams are similar that way. And so, um, that's why practice is so important to get yourself prepared for that for that type of ball game, um, and then ultimately, you know, Saturday 11 a.m. is a moment of truth. You know, how how are you gonna play? On your right, 
Hey, um, Coach, when you looked at the film, when you guys got within the five and were unable to punch it in, what did you see on film that's there? Are you seeing a common theme? And the, the second part of that is when you decide to go for it on, on fourth downs, is that gut or are you using analytics to go for that? Um, so the, the first part is probably a variety of things. You know, you, you, know, you game plan for stuff that, that you think you're going to get, and sometimes you get what you think you're going to get, and then that's when – you want your execution to kick in, and, and we just haven't executed great. The second thing is you, you game plan for something you think you're going to get, and then you don't get that. And so now um, the auxiliary playmaking somewhat has to kick in, and, and guys have to adjust and adapt on the fly. Um, and then the third is, you know, when you're down there is, when do you run it? When do you throw it? And, and what personnel and all those types of things. So there's a, there's a multitude of things that come into play. Um, in the end, you know, I, the ball's got to cross the goal line, right? And and we just haven't done a good enough job, and so we got to continue to, to, you know, to kind of work at that and get that done. What was the second question? When you go for on the fourth down, is that, yeah. is that analytics or gut? Um, it's more gut. You know, we have analytics. Um, I always find out kind of what the analytics says, but at the end of the day, I go with. Um, what I think is in the best interest of our team at that moment. You know, I, I jokingly say people have told me about the book, and I said, yeah, we, we have a book too, but last time I checked, President Hartzell and CDC didn't hire the book. They hired Steve Sarkeesian to be the head coach, so I, I kind of trust my gut on a lot of that stuff. Uh, coach, Kansas State has been uh, running two quarterbacks for the past couple of games. What's the challenge of dealing with yeah. both of them? Well, you know, th their scheme really doesn't change, you know, and, and they're both really good players. Obviously, Howard has a ton of experience. Uh, he played against us, shoot, three years ago here and started against us. Um, the, the young kid is, is new to it, but in the end, they're still running their same stuff, a little bit different style. Howard definitely has the long speed. We saw that. The, the freshman, he is really quick and, and dynamic with the ball in his hand. So you kind of get a lot of the same plays and the passing concepts and things. And um, But they do roll them. And then what they kind of it feels like they're doing is who's the hot hand. And when a guy starts getting hot, that's who they that's who they kind of roll with. And obviously last week it was pretty much exclusively Howard. That doesn't mean that this game's going to go the exact same way. I think they get a feel for how the game is going. Got time for two last ones. Start over here. Coach, you've kind of talked about K-State running, uh, running the ball. It's been a few weeks since you played a run-first team. How much of an adjustment is that defensively in practice, not having done that in about a month or so? Well, you know, hopefully, you know, in scout periods, they have to prepare for, you know, whatever our opponent's you know, tendencies are, and they have to get themselves ready for that from a defensive perspective. But we, on every Tuesday and Wednesday, we do good on good team run for this very reason because, you know, each week you don't know who's going who's gonna to emphasize what. And so there, we always go with the period of we're not going to throw a pass, we're going to line up, and we're going to run the ball. And we have to have the ability to run the ball on offense when the defense knows we're going to run it. And we have to make sure that we have the ability to stop the run uh, and being physical at that. But we do the same thing with the pass game too. We'll have another portion of practice where we do a good on good seven on seven period. There's a speed and a tempo and a physicality of, of why that we do that. You know, the scout periods are great to get the looks, but you have to feel that competitive juice and the speed and the tenacity of the game that we, we want to make sure we keep it at the forefront of what we do on a weekly basis. And so, to your point, here comes a running football team. Hopefully, yeah, they're going to have some schemes that are different from ours. But, man, we should be, we should be pretty well dialed into the physicality that's going to be needed to play the game. Last one in the middle, Roger. Well, speaking of running, uh, Ricky Williams is going to be honored on Saturday. Some, some memories, some thoughts. He was a little bit behind you, but a Southern California kid. What are your memories of Ricky? Yeah, I mean, phenomenal football player. Um, 25 years now, which is, tells me how old I am. Um, but but the fact that, that you know winning the Heisman Trophy and and what he was able to do here and to continue to carry the legacy of the great runners here right and and there's been more since and continue to go it's it's unique how certain places uh, have that niche at a position group and it just continues to grow and you know what a legacy that 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 he left here um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him and he was a phenomenal phenomenal football player.